Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Oliver Perry Show. We've got another set of amazing guests today. I'm so excited to talk to them. These two gentlemen host a podcast called the Passive Money Podcast, also known as Passive Money on YouTube. They are not uh, financial professionals. They're not telling you exactly what to do. They're going to give you their experience. You're going to learn from them because that's been their focus for some time now is helping people learn how to improve their financial standing. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. Kirby and Mr. Alex from Passive Money. Yeah, Gentlemen, good. how you feeling? Good, good. 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 All right. Good. All right, guys. I'm nervous about this one. Um, all right. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. Be nervous. <laughs> so check it out. So I just want to hop straight into it. And the idea behind this entire thing is to give people easy ways that they can improve their financial standing to get to multifamily real estate, just real estate in general, or whatever it might be. But before we hop into that, there is one thing that I need to find out first. All right, Alex, mm -hmm. Kirby once said that you are so frugal that you and your wife go out and share drinks. Is that still true? <laughs> that was never true. That was, <laughs> that was never true. That was never true. I, I, thought, I, say, I always get water, though. I always get water. It's the only free thing. Yeah, okay, my, my that's wife fair. Will be the one ordering. Yeah. That's fair. I just wanted to make sure and see if that's still a thing or not. I didn't want to judge. You know what I mean? <laughs> No, no, that was, that was never true. Uh, All right. Okay, okay, okay. All right, I'm, I'm going to chill out then. All right. It so, was close. It was close. It was close. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen. So how did you guys get started? How did you guys get started on your financial journey? And, and we'll take turns however you guys like. Matter of fact, let's start with Alex. Alex, come in. <clears throat> how did you get started yeah. on your financial journey specifically? How did you work that out? Um, it was kind of in two different parts. So the first part would be when I was uh, when I was 18, I had already been I had already had a online uh, business where I sold like military antiques. Right. Um, and so it kind of showed me a perspective that you can create income from something outside of a, you know, a nine to five job. So that really fascinated me. And I wanted to uh whether it was with that specific business or something else, I wanted to create income outside of just having to go and report to, you know, a boss or a, t a typical corporate job, something of that sort. So that kind of started my journey to thinking differently about money. Okay. And I just remember thinking to myself, this was when I was 18. So I remember thinking to myself, like, if I had enough money, I could, you know, essentially not have to go work for somebody. And I would say the second part to changing my mentality was meeting Kirby, actually, who's been uh, a great coach in my life, teaching me uh, different ways to actually create income, kind of laying out like a blueprint on uh, what it is that uh, is required to achieve success in that in that way. Um, but I would say the first, you know, the first way that I started thinking differently about money was just taking the time to actually think to myself, you know, where do I want to be in my future? And um, do I really want to be working at a job for 40 years like most of America does? Yeah, that's excellent. That's an excellent question to ask yourself. I ask myself that all the time, right as I put my uniform on. Uh, Kirby, what about you, man? Uh, well, uh, like you know, we both military. Uh, but I started my final jer financial journey off by being broke, actually. Um, I got out of the military in 2007, right at the height of the financial crisis. Okay. And um, and everybody was telling me when I got out, oh, you need to buy a house, you need to buy a house. That's when they was giving the robo loans. I bought a house. Well, I actually built a house, no proof of income. Right. Uh, yeah, it was, it <laughs> nice. was insane. Uh, so with that, and then uh, getting out right during the financial crisis, you know, couldn't find a job, and the jobs I did find was paying like nine, ten thousand an hour, but I still had a thirteen, fourteen hundred dollar month mortgage payment. Wow. And then so I was just tired of being broke. So I just I was just, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul, you know, credit card transfers to credit card transfers. And then it went from there to it got to be a better way. And then one day I'm riding. I always listen to AM radio and uh, I would listen to a guy. Everybody know who he is. Dave Ramsey on the radio. And um, and then I and I thought it was an infomercial, but I only had I was only listening to AM radio. So I'll just ride and listen to it. And I'm saying this guy's a joke. This guy's a joke. He's full of it. And then I told myself, I'm going to listen to everything he says. And then he had a book out also. So I said, I'm going to read the book. I'm going to do everything he says. 
And then when it doesn't work, I'm going to call this radio station and cuss them out. And it, then I, I look at it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, wait, <laughs> I look wait, at it now. Wait, Kirby, why are you so aggressive, man? What's going on? What's, <laughs> right, what's right. happening and, at this time? <laughs> and, and and the thing was was because I realized now, being more mature, I was mad at myself. Mm. I wasn't mad at him. I was mad at myself for putting myself in that situation. Right. And then, but I had to blame somebody else at the time. I could, it couldn't be my fault. It had to be somebody else's. I get it. So I actually I actually read the book in like a day, and then I read it again. And I just started following everything he said to the letter. Because, of course, I, if it didn't work, I wanted to cuss him out. So I was going to follow everything to the letter. And that was like an epiphany in my life, honestly. That was honestly an epiphany in my life. It changed, like, overnight. So when, when I started doing it, after a couple of weeks, I'm looking like, this stuff really works. And right. then I just kept going and kept going. And that was how I first got into financial understanding. Okay. Nice. Nice. Okay. So then let me ask you this then, Kirby. Mm-hmm. What, what's, what's a few ways, and let's just start with one. What's one way that you've improved or that you use to improve your own financial standing? Uh, cut out expenses, cut out expenses. As far as keeping up with the Joneses expenses, um, okay. things, the things like, so just for the record, me, I don't celebrate holidays. I never have, but that was something that I noticed a lot of people spend a lot of money on. Uh, they go overboard. They go deeply into debt for birthdays, Christmases. If you have North Sweeties Day, Thanksgiving, all of that. And then they put all that stuff on credit cards and they spend the rest of the year trying to pay it off to regurgitate and do that again year over year over year. Yeah. And those credit card bills, 18%. That's the best investment you could do is get out of consumer debt. But that was that was probably one of the biggest things I did. I, ne- I stopped trying to keep up with the Jones. Everybody, when they had birthdays and stuff, they had to do big things. And then I especially being in the military, okay, I got to do something and then cut that out. That was a big way to save my finances in, in a huge way, actually. I, I, be, I believe it. I believe it. I've, uh, make sure my wife don't hear me. So I'm going through the same thing. Right. right. All, right. All right. Don't kill me. I'm scared. Okay. All right. All right. Alex, what about you, man? What What about you? What would you, what are one thing that you did up to this point to ensure that you were doing better financially? Yeah. Um, I would actually go right off of what Kirby ended with. Um, and I have to thank them to, for, uh, for teaching me how to say no to, uh, people that are close to me. Mm-hmm. That was probably one of the hardest things. Uh, I grew up in a family where, it's very much, um, you know, around the holiday times or birthdays, you're, you know, it's it's almost like an obligation or you're expected to give gifts mm. and uh, learning to cut that out, especially telling friends. I mean, I would have friends ask to, like, pay for their college tuition and stuff. So learning to say no to that, you know, just telling people no, it, it's it's insane how the people closest to you will be the ones with their hands out first. But uh Learning to cut that out first can can save you a lot of money. So let's let's dive. All right, so let's dive into that a little bit because <clears throat> that's that's a really good one. I didn't think about that. What did you learn? What was the key part of that learning, and, and how did you go through that process to figure it out? As Kirby was kind of giving you the guidelines. What did I learn? Can you repeat that again? Yeah, of course, of course. What did you figure out from what Kirby was teaching you? What are the the key things that you took away from Kirby teaching you? On how to do that. It's gonna sound kind of dark, but in there's a lot of truth to this. In a sense, in a way, if people and I'm not saying maybe not for all families, mm-hmm. but if people actually think like if if someone is starting a business or they're starting to be financially well with their money, responsible investing, they're making a sacrifice and they have to understand that the people that may ask them for money aren't making the same sacrifice as them and why should they feel obligated to give money out to those same people and most of the time those people are your friends your family uh, like i said the people closest to you so saying no to them because a lot of times they really just don't understand the sacrifice you're making but i mean i've sacrificed a lot of you know say eating out or going on trips right uh you know i know people that go to we live in florida so i know people that go to 
Disney and Busch Gardens like every weekend. Um, right. So, you know, I, I don't do that. You know what I mean? So if those same people are the ones asking for money, mm-hmm. but not willing to make the same sacrifices that I'm making and my wife are making, then uh, why should I continue to give them money? Ooh. Okay. So I like that. That very last part is probably my favorite part is your thought process on it being they're not going to give up what you and your wife are giving up to get where they want to go. Um, exactly. So with that sacrifice, Kirby, for you, what kind of sacrifices are you focusing on outside of, of course, you know, the holidays thing? Um, but what sacrifices are you making to continue to improve and develop on your side of it? Well, now it's a little bit different. Um, like where Alex is at now is where probably I started off years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but back then I gave up a lot. I mean, it was, it was bad in the house. Uh, we was unscrewing light bulbs to keep the electricity down. Um, <laughs> Great Jesus. But now, yeah, yeah, it was, it was bad. It was, like I said, I learned from being broke, but, right. um, but now it's more, I have, I have, uh, quite a few units now. I own businesses, commercial property and things like that. And, but still me and my family. And then, so, like I said, when we was going through that uh, time when we was super broke mm-hmm. and I went through the Dave Ramsey book and I wanted to do more than what Dave Ramsey said. I know a lot of people say Dave Ramsey is hard, but I said, we're going to live on 20% of our income and save 80%. Mm. Still to this day, still to this day, we live on 20% of our income and save 80%. It's just now the 20% is just way bigger than it was back then right. when uh, we were broke. But that's that's the sacrifice that we make. But yeah, 80%. And now, so it's, it really don't even feel like a sacrifice to us because my 80% might be the next man's 100%. So it's right. not a huge sacrifice, but that's that's what we do. So do you think now, was that something that you would advise somebody to start out with? Or would that be something that you would kind of tell them, hey, that's an advanced level skill, start here. And then where would they start if you're saying start here? Well, I, I believe the philosophy at least say you know, live off 60%, save 40%. But right. everybody think it's all about, oh, I got to cut my expenses to get there. How about make more money to get there? Do a side mm-hmm. job. You know, you work your nine to five, but get another side job, a side hustle, you know, s- sell stuff online or something like that to increase your income. So that 60% will still be a nice chunk of change so you can live off of, so you're not sacrificing unscrewing light bulbs like I was, things like that. And uh, and then you can go on. But everybody always just think of cut, 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 but right. make more, it can still uh, give you the same outcome. Okay, okay. So, Alex, what would you say is the next thing someone should focus on? Because you talked about the sacrifice as far as what you and your wife sacrifice and you things that you learned from Kirby as well. But what else is there that they can do? Because – Buying a multifamily, pro- not a multifamily property, a multifamily or any property for that matter, is is a very big undertaking, and it seems daunting when you're starting out. How would they handle that? Yeah, um, I would say people have to learn how to get out of their comfort zone. Um, it's it's not easy at all. Uh, Kirby and I just made a video recently on this actually, and I was talking about how you kind of have to just force yourself. Um, there's no there's no like blueprint or way to go into um, a situation like that, but you, you have to force yourself to do it and think of it really just think of your future. If people would think about where they would want to be in their future, right. Uh, more often, I think they would take more risk. Um, but it, it's all necessary. It, you have to take risk. You have to take action. Uh, without it, you, you won't get anywhere. And by the time you're old, you'll, you have a lot of, of, uh, regrets. So let's, let's that that with that said, let's talk about risk a little bit. As you're doing this, I've always thought you got to find ways to mitigate the risk, find ways to put yourself in that small percentage where it's much more difficult for you to lose out everything. How do you go about mitigating the risk? What's your thought process on that? For are you asking me or? Oh, sorry, I forgot. There's two of y'all. My bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so used to interviewing one person, so interviewing two is new. But nonetheless, Alex, for you, how do you how would you go about mitigating that? So learning from Kirby, I don't think there's any mitigation. It's just jump right <laughs> in. <laughs> so, okay. So, okay. So I've got to say, um having my wife on board is right. 
biggest help um, because my wife makes more, probably more sacrifices than I do. Um, So she's fully on board. I would say for someone that's single, especially if they're young, it's, Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be, it should be very easy for them to take risk because they have, you know, they may have the responsibility of having a job, but um, if they don't have a wife or kids, um, you know, you can, you can go ahead and take that risk. When you have a family, um, I would say it's a little bit harder, but if someone is in a relationship and they're just married, no kids, um, I would encourage that married couple to take risks together. Um, and a lot more can be done if you're working as a team. Got it. Okay. Okay. So the old adage of together, everyone achieves more is kind of the, the wave for this one then. Yeah. Yeah. I would okay. agree with that. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So for you, Kirby, you, as Alex is talking, he continues to talk about you as the coach. <laughs> <laughs> I've always thought, and this has been my adage, right? Coaches have coaches. Uh, players have coaches. The greatest millionaires on this in this world have coaches in some areas of their life. How does one go about finding the right coach? Like, Alex, I know found you, kind of stumbled into you, but you've taken that role, from what I can tell, very well and, and pushed him forward in his own development. So how does somebody go and find a, a Kirby for themselves? Um, well, it's, it's not as hard as people think. Okay. The, the key is, all right. So for me, for instance, I didn't have a per se coach. My coach was Dave Ramsey. You know, Mm. my coach was finding people that were successful and followed the blueprint. I don't want to create a new blueprint and try to create my own. Why create my own when people that's there before me, that's already created it. So I didn't have any starting out, I didn't have any people that I knew that was wealthy or rich or anything like that. So I surrounded myself with, and it's going to sound boring. I sound, surrounded myself with books like the Robert Kiyosaki's, the, the uh, Grant Cardone's, the Rich Dad Poor Dad's, the Richest Man in Babylon's, As a Man Thinketh. Those are the things that I, I just, you know, immersed myself in. And I just followed their blueprint to the letter. I didn't try to go create my own like, Oh, he said it this way, but I'm going to do put my little twist in there also. Right. In the book or the blueprint that they provided, it didn't say put your own little twist in there. So if if I knew what I was doing, I wouldn't sit I wouldn't be sitting here broke reading their book if I knew what I was doing. So I act, I act like, well, I didn't act like I knew I didn't know nothing. Right. I knew I didn't know nothing, so I went and took the knowledge of people that knew stuff and just took it on 100% and followed it to the letter. Okay. That's a and, that's dope. You get the same result. Absolutely. Okay, so let's let's take Dave Ramsey out the picture, right? Okay. Give me your best person for someone to go and watch outside of the Passive Money Podcast, which for those listening and watching, I highly recommend the Passive Money Podcast. Um, but outside of you guys and Dave Ramsey, where would you tell someone to go get started to figure it out? Um. Uh- for me, it's for me is reading. I'm a I'm a big reader. Okay. Um, but like Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Rich Dad Poor Dad, a lot of people say they read the book. I always tell them to read it again if they're not taking action on it because it's right. a lot of things in there. Um, and then you uh you got Grant Cardone. I know some people think he's very abrasive. If you, I'm always of the mindset of don't think of the messenger, think of the message. So if you listen to what he's saying mm-hmm. of how money works then it will give you a better understanding of how how the whole system in itself goes. But you, again, like I said, some people have some misgivings about his tone and stuff like that. Uh, even Dan Pena is another one. <laughs> but again, misgivings about his tone. But I don't look at the messenger. I just listen to the message and what they're trying to say. It's a lot of people that's out there wealthy. Uh, of course, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett been giving out a blueprint for 80 years. And everybody that's broker than him is trying to talk down on his blueprint, but I follow his blueprint also is that's, that's how I do it. And those are people that I would listen to just thinking off the top of my head right now. Okay. Alex, what I, I'm going to put you on the spot here. What book okay. are you reading right now? If right financially, now I have to yeah. be 
Go ahead. I have to be honest, I'm not reading a book right now. Mm. So Kirby's teachings yeah. are falling short, is what you're saying? <laughs> <Huh>? No, <laughs> Stirring it, the pot. It, it never falls short. It never falls short. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, I think I watch more videos um, than reading. Okay. Um, what's the last best video, or not last best, but what's the best video you've watched recently? And who, who was that from? The best video? Oh, man, I can't even narrow it down. But um, a lot of content that I watch comes from... Uh, either Robert Kiyosaki, Dan Pena, mm-hmm. um, or there's a there's one that people aren't so happy about right now, which is Andrew Tate. But his financial advice is pretty on point. Yeah, Andrew Tate is an interesting one. I, I think it's less Andrew Tate's advice sometimes, more his abrasiveness. I guess is what people have a right. problem with. It seems like because um, a lot of the things that he said, as far as financially. We're solid, like decision making process. We're solid, um, right? The relationship stuff, not my business. I'm married. I, I don't even talk about relationships. Um, <laughs> so you know, interesting. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, so gentlemen, let's let's talk about um, the the passive money podcast. How did you, Alex? No, Kirby, you can't answer this. This is when Alex is gonna answer this. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, how did you how did you meet Kirby? I met Kirby through a friend at work. Okay. Um, who, who his brother served with Kirby uh, in Iraq. Um, so this friend invited me. I can't even remember if there was a, like a special occasion or anything, but he invited me over to his brother's house for uh, for dinner, and he said that Kirby was going to be there. Okay. And he always talked about Kirby, but he never really let me meet him so i didn't want to pass up this chance and i just went and just kind of zoned in like a stalker to everything kirby that wait 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 a second (laughs) hold on hold hold on wait a second wait a second you Uh, said you said slide in like a stalker is that what you said yeah because so kirby was uh (laughs) talking to uh my friend's uncle i think it was okay uh about his uncle had moved down here from new york i think and he was trying to start investing in real estate or getting a realtor's license something like that right um he, he owned a towing company and so kirby was just giving him advice and i had never heard like actual advice come from like a live human being <laughs> that was successful it's all it was always you know just hearing people online so to listen to someone firsthand talk about it was important to me and i didn't want to miss out on anything he was saying and then from there um, I think he uh, gave me his Facebook or something. I started messaging him on there. And then so happens we get the God given gift of the passive money podcast. I like passive it. Yeah. All right. So what's the most difficult thing you guys think? And, and Kirby, you can answer this. What's the most difficult thing in your opinion that people are going to run into first when they're going through the process of deciding, Hey, I'm getting, my, I'm going to get myself together financially. The most difficult yes. thing. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. So the most difficult thing people run into is okay. they don't want to give up. They don't want to give up the life that they know. You know, they've been, they've been broke already, but right. they still want to keep all those old habits that they've been doing. Mm. But so they think that it's a magical like lottery system. You know, everybody want, you know, instant gratification. Uh, they want their microwavable system out there. But that's the hard part is people giving up, especially if you're in your 20s and 30s. You've been living a certain way for 20 years and then now giving that up to pivot and change. That's why Got you it. see more people standing in the lottery line instead of looking for wealth. OK. OK, that makes sense. OK. So then. Once they've done that, what's the next step? Because it's very easy, like you said, to do the sacrifice, to give up all these things that we talked about to this point. But like the biggest part that people have to deal with is that mental, the mental game. What ways have you made it easy for yourself and kind of that you've taught Alex up to this point how to beat that mental game, how to win that game? Well, first, Alex is a unicorn, and I tell him that all the time. What I mean by a unicorn (laughs) is you don't, you won't see, you won't see as many people his age, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, you know, 21. I was, I was hanging in a barracks trying to get drunk everywhere, but you won't see them thinking about their financial future at that young of age. So for, for Alex is a little bit different than 
telling the layman because you know they still have that peer pressure of friends and things like that. You know, Alex, you know, he ain't got no friends. Don't let him tell you anything. <laughs> oh, <it's not>. Wait <laughs> a second, this has got ugly in this podcast. What is going on right now? But no, but no, uh, but so, but Alex, he he don't have that that need to impress other people. Got it. So that's back to keeping up with the Jones's comment is he don't have that need to do that. So it's not a it's not a thing for him to have to worry about. But for other people, it's just it's just setting up was really setting up a structure. It's I'm not sitting here saying, oh, you can't go do nothing, but you can't get paid if you got a job. You can't get paid on Friday and be broke by Monday and think you're gonna be successful financially. Right. I mean, okay. Okay, do one or two things there, but you can't you can't sit there and just every trip, every uh, club night, every baseball game, every theme park, you're at all of it and think you're going to be successful. Just won't happen. Mm, okay. Let's let's go to that keeping keeping up with the Joneses part, Alex. So for you, you're at, I'm going to give you a scenario. You're at the store, right? You mm-hmm. see this pair of socks that you've wanted for the last five years of your life. God knows why you wanted some socks, but your feet are bare. You want You want some socks right now. Right. What's your thought process when you see that thing that's been teasing you, that's been looking at you for days on end to keep yourself from going to make that purchase? Man, it it's not even that hard for me because I'm just like, man, how many stock like how many shares can I buy on the stock market with this? So like I just I'm always thinking about investing. I, I just if I if I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. There's there's things that I think are nice. Like right. there's certain cars I think are nice or watches, stuff like that. But when I see the prices, I'm just like, I can't fathom, like, I can't understand why someone would pay that because to me, it's like, once you pay that, it just, you just lose the money. And mm. I, Kirby will tell you, I try to hoard every penny possible that I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. I mean, this is where, this is how we, this is how he got to the joke of sharing, sharing a drink out with the missus. You know what I mean? So I, I would assume you're holding on to every penny just based on that joke. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much, pretty so much. all right so so what about so what if what happens with you when it comes to things that like quote unquote improve in value so let's say uh let's not do property let's do like a watch a rolex something on that level that is known to improve in value is that still something in your head you're like ah that's not really an investment and then how do you you know what i mean like because that's got to be difficult yeah. to set goals for yourself then yeah, so I'll say like on the part where I mentioned uh, buying and selling military antiques, um, right. those are known to improve in value things dating back from like say the Civil War up until World War II. Mm-hmm. Um, those kind of antiques because they're, I mean obviously they're not produced anymore and more and more get destroyed every day. Um, they go up in value and it's, I'm a huge history buff so that w- I would say is hard for me to decide, you know, how am I going to actually make this investment rather than can I rather than just buying it because I like it. Right. So either I would use it to bring attention to my sales, you know, if I, if I can buy this item that is rare and it is known to be rare amongst the collectors community, it'll bring attention to my page and will incre- uh, increase sales. So I'll do that um, if there's something like that. But yeah, that, that I would say is uh, one, one category that I kind of struggle with on wanting to buy but uh, as far as an investment improving in value, um, my idea of an investment has changed a lot um, mm-hmm. because what I once thought was just, you know, you buy it and it goes up in value. If it doesn't bring you an income, is it really an investment? I think that would be something that people should ask themselves because a lot of people, they especially collect, you know, silver coins or gold, um, which I understand can hold its value or increase in value and it's real money in a sense, but it doesn't necessarily bring you an income unless you're actively selling those those products got it okay that makes sense that makes sense i mean of course you know the being able to actively sell the products makes absolute sense and even though your fact that you as a history buff you have, i'm guaranteeing you're going to have that struggle with stuff that is involved in history military right. history in some form or fashion so that makes sense well, he's only like 20, so everything is history for him, right? <laughs> so we're going to pull out military A-tracks right out the original home bees <laughs> and toss, toss it to Alex. Alex will make it work. Yeah. I love it. All right. So, so, Alex, let me ask you this. If you were to go back right now 
to look at all because you I know you got a lot of time to talk with Kirby, but when you started out, what you know now is different than what you know then. What would have been the first question you asked Kirby as opposed to what you did ask Kirby? And then for Kirby, what's the answer to this question? Go ahead, Alex. Okay. Hmm, man, that's a good one. Yes. Um, yes, it is, Kirby. Yes, it is. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it is, Alex. Come on. I would say um, it, it took me a while to actually uh, jump right in. And, and I understand mm-hmm. Kirby's coaching method where – uh, you know, you, you can't just tell people, you know, dump everything you've got into right. an investment. Um, but I would say if I could have shown uh, that risk, that I was willing to take that risk earlier, mm-hmm. that I would have came to him that way. Um, because I think it took about leading up to a year before I showed him that I was willing to pretty much put everything I have into investments. Um, mm-hmm. So if I could have went in earlier, I think I could have maybe made more before that point. Okay, so for you, fair enough. So for you, Kirby, Mm -hmm. when that person comes to you like Alex did, and he says, "Hey, listen, I'm I'm ready to go, all in. I'm I'm putting family. I don't care. I'll live in a hotel. My uh my grass. I've got a you know I've got a great camper. I'll go outside, sleep (laughs) under stars if I have to. (laughs) What's 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 the way? Because like you said, there's risk to everything." And even jumping in is sketchy. It can be very sketchy. So what's your advice to that person, particularly those who are in the military? Because we know there's Joe Snuffy out there who just bought a BMW coming back from Afghanistan, Kuwait, or wherever else. What, what's your, what's your guidance to them? Uh, If the first thing is follow the numbers, the numbers is, and I know we talked about risk earlier, but numbers, numbers can mitigate the risk a lot. If you know the numbers, And you have to do the work to find out the numbers. Don't just take anybody's word for it. But if you know the numbers, that's how you do it. But as you're saying in this scenario, my advice to somebody who say they're ready to go all in is to go all in. I'm not saying just, all right, here's my, here's all my life savings here. Take it. You do it. What I mean by go all in is, is you want to go all in and do the work, do the time that it takes to find out the numbers. If you're investing in stocks, find out the number. If you're investing in real estate, find out what you need. Right. Go, going through the steps to continue, excuse me, to continue to gain knowledge through the process. And then once you have the knowledge and you find something that you're for sure about, go ahead and do it. I mean, me, I process faster. That's probably why Alex would say, oh, he's crazy. Just he's all in. But I process the numbers <laughs> faster. But but yeah, I am somebody who will see a deal, like a run of numbers, close right. to almost in my head, and then be on the deal that fast. So you underwrite all your deals and all that great stuff as well? Yeah. yeah. Were you always that know. good at, at the numbers, or that was something you had to develop? Uh, it was. I was good at numbers, like A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, good. But I <laughs> wanted... <laughs> Over time, over time. You okay. Know, it, it, that's what it is. Is I, you know, of course, the first deal you do in real estate, it ain't gonna be the best deal you ever make. Uh, but you, once you do the deal, you find out what's the good, the bads. Find out where you can fix your numbers. Find your adjustments there and things like that. And then when you go for the next deal, you're gonna try to make it better than the deal before. And then you just keep plowing through. As long as you understand where the cash flow is coming from, right. having that cash flow set up, making sure you got a reserve and things like that, and then keep going to the next deal and keep growing out your portfolio, you'll be fine. I like the advice. I, I'm, I'm going to absolutely disagree with you, though, a little bit here. And hear okay. me out, right? So mm-hmm. I feel like every deal you do, especially the first deal, is the best deal you can do. And the reason I say that is because the amount that you learn from taking the L's in those deals, ah, oh, it sells you so much money down the line. Like I did the flip that I did, I lost all of it, <clears throat> but I lost a lot of money on that. Let's just say lost a lot of money on that. And I even partnered with somebody with more experience, but the stuff that I learned from that, oh, I had no idea what a French drain was before I flipped the house. I, I didn't even know French had drains like that. But apparently they're in the U.S. too, just like French fries. I, France is everywhere now. So I, I, I agree with you. Based on the knowledge base, it's nothing like diversity. Nothing. So I, nothing. I that. What, I, what I, I was talking about financially. Side, I mean, yes, you're, tracking. Okay, you're I'm sorry. Right. My you're bad. 100%. I apologize. <laughs> no, you're, you're right. But yeah, actually, like, but you, like you said, financially speaking, if we're just talking strictly the dollars and cents of it, 100, percent you're going to take the L most likely the first deal. 
Mm-hmm. Alex, I understand you just got finished knocking down a deal. What's, what's going on? How, how'd that go? What was that experience like? Uh, the experience was terrible. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I, I kind of like, I, I talked about this in Kirby has a, a stock market class, but well, it's, it's a finance class basically. But uh, I told people in the class, you know, it kind of just felt like Kirby just wrapped a, like a blindfold around my eyes and was like, just keep going. I, like, I got you. <laughs> like, I mean, I really had no idea what I was doing. I was texting him. I, I was like, man, I'm probably annoying the crap out of him. Like, texting him so much asking him every little question before i even messaged the 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 seller's agent i would ask him i would screenshot and be like hey does this message look good <laughs> like i i really had no idea what i was doing but eventually everything it, it came through it, it, you know it, everything's good right now so but it, it takes it, it's uncomfortable for sure in the first one that's a fact it's that is that is a fact now that you've knocked down the first one though what's the next step for you in your your so, journey investing yeah so i was saying um i wanted to buy a property and i wanted to give myself like a year wait till 2024 but okay. kirby was like you know if 2023 comes and you know prices start to drop you're just going to miss out on all those deals and uh which Ooh. is very true so i'll have to go a lot harder on uh saving putting money aside to get a to start looking into getting a property 2023 but I would like to get a, uh, a multifamily, uh, duplex, triplex, something of that sort. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Sorry. Every time somebody <laughs> says multifamily, I get excited. I apologize. All right. <laughs> Kirby, what's – all right. That's – something Alex said was key to me just now. Um, he said your advice to him was to have money ready to, to take on some shots in 2023. Right. What are you seeing in the market as it stands right now that's telling you, hey, this is this is the time we need to be taking shots? Well, what I'm seeing right now is the interest rates, the interest rates going higher. I'm seeing days on market for homes a lot longer. Mm-hmm. I actually see a home in my neighborhood right now that's been sitting on the market, you know, six months, eight months, two years ago. It had been off the market in a week. Now it's been on the market for 40 days. And I know why it's because the interest rates has risen and then realtors still believe, and I'm not going to talk bad about realtors on this show, but (laughs) realtors still believe that people are looking at the list price on houses, but in truth, they're looking at how much they can afford per month. Mm. So this same house when interest rates was at 2.5%, you would have paid between 12 to $1,800 a month. But now that interest rates are at seven to 8%, they're paying almost $3,500 a month. It's a big gap in how much people can afford a month. And then when it comes to the realtor side, again, it, they're still thinking, I mean, coming to the investor side, excuse me. Right. The realtors still believe that, and the sellers believe that their people are looking at the sale price. But the truth is they're looking at the cash flow. They're looking at how much money can they make after the place is rented, if the place is already rented, is the rents that, they're, that they'll, they'll be receiving once they acquire this property, would that be enough to handle the maintenance, handle the property management, handle the debt obligation that I have and still bring money to the investor? But the real estate agents, and I actually just had a call with the real estate agent uh, earlier this morning, just explaining that to her, the, the nuances of what market we're going into. Right. And with, with all that stuff that I just mentioned, days on market, higher interest rates, uh, a lot of people just jumping out the market because it's too expensive for them to... Uh, pay for things on a month-to-month basis because the prices are just way higher if they pay this interest rate it's going to leave a lot of opportunities because people it's going to be four sellers in the market people that need to sell Um, we've seen uh, a lot of white collar jobs especially in silicon valley it hasn't gravitated over here to our side of the country yet losing their job and stuff like that so it'll be people have to be forced to sell their homes because they don't have a job or something like that and then they're going to have to knock off a lot of those dollars to sell that home and the homes in the neighborhood, of course, you know how it goes. If a home sells for less price, then right. all the homes in the neighborhood start going down for less price. The cops drop lower. So I'm seeing all that stuff happening in a vacuum right now. So I'm just stacking cash, stacking cash, stacking cash to be prepared for when opportunity hits and go for it. Okay. Let me ask you this then. Mm-hmm. In your opinion and Kirby, I want to hear your thought process on this. And Alex, I want to hear yours on this as well. What to you, and I know it's subjective to each person, but what to you qualifies as a deal you're going to take the shot on? 
is it 200 300 thousand or 300 thousand dollars a month or what, what's that cash will look like for you uh well for me it for me it looks it looks first i go with the one percent rule i mean i know you're familiar with that you know Absolutely. the revenue that's coming in is one percent of the list price that's that's my baseline if it's not cash flow positive at day one i'm not touching the deal i know mm-hmm. i can rehab the place i know i can uh raise the rents but that's work that i have to do i'm not paying a seller for work that i have to do so whatever they have done in the time that they own the property if the cash flow matches up i will pay them based on the value of how much uh rent is coming in right and then from there it's just um i'm working on a, five, a six unit yeah georgia six unit i'm working on a six unit one right now and for me it's about acquiring as many units as possible right. so maybe you getting three four hundred dollars a door on your first deal and you just keep you keep acquiring units that three and four hundred dollars for each door that you grab it'll mm-hmm. eventually accumulate to thousands ten thousand a hundred thousand dollars a month that you bring it in over time if you just keep stacking them up on top of each other got it so it's a it's a quantity and quality thing it's not one versus the other it's kind of a balance in between the two correct okay Alex, what about you, man? What are you looking for when you're going out to find a deal? What What's giving you the okay? Is it the 1% yeah. rule? You're at 2, 20%? What, what are you looking at? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm a little bit more conservative. Kirby's on a conquest, a war path. But uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to, uh, I'm trying to keep the, I, I try to do the 1% rule. And then if it can at least pull in cash flow more than uh, the S&P 500, which for those that may not know is an index fund on the stock market that, over the long term brings in about 10% a year. So if I can make them more above that, then I think I'm good. Okay. Fantastic. All right, gentlemen, let's do the, uh, I got so much I want to ask y'all, but we're going to do the troop to task. Cause I'm very respectful of everybody's time. So let's do the troop to task for those watching and listening. Troop to task is a military term. What we do is we provide a soldier, a sailor, an airman, a specific instruction on something that they can do and then come back after that mission is complete and we give them the next assignment. So for each of the gentlemen, I'm going to ask them what the troop to task for you is today. So let's start out with Alex. Alex, what's your troop to task for the listener today? I would say take more action and don't be, uh, don't be afraid. Just, I, I really love the quote, learn to be, you have to learn to be, uh, you have to learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, I would, I would go with that. I like it. All right, Kirby, what about you? Uh, it's go out and get it. I mean, I mentioned, you know, reading books and things like that, but just gaining knowledge by itself don't mean nothing. It's useless if you just have the knowledge and you're not going out there and putting it to action. It's going out there and putting it to action. No matter how many books you read, no matter how many YouTube videos you watch of people giving you financial advice or advice about anything, period, if you don't put it into action, it won't do you no good. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Alex and Kirby have given you a bunch of easy ways to go about improving your own financial position and even giving you some advice on real estate investing yourself. And with that said, we're going to hop into now the game we call the hot seat. Now we're going to have a fancy transition here. So there's some fancy transition. It just happened. All right, cool. Now we're jumping into this. (laughs) My editor is going to kill me. All right. um, So all three of us going to, I think I'm going to join you guys on this one. It might be fun. So all three of us are going to answer these questions. Um, and we're going to go from my right, which is Alex, jump okay. to Kirby, and then I'll, I'll answer last, and we'll mix it up in between there. All right. Okay. So, Alex, first question. What puts me in a good mood immediately? You or me? You. Oh. Well, I mean, I'm going to answer, <laughs> too. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to answer, too. What puts me? Is yeah, yeah. Right? What okay. puts you in a good mood? It's oh, me. I did say what's me. That's wrong on the car. My um, bad. Go ahead. <laughs> immediately. Yeah. Probably coffee. I don't know. <laughs> Probably coffee, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, coffee. Okay. Fair enough. All right, Kirby. What about you? We'll put you in a good mood immediately. Uh, when the property management management sent me the email saying the check's on the way. How did I know? <laughs> How did I know? All right. That's fair enough. That's fair. For me, um, I if I put on Lionel Richie's all night long, it's 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 game on. I don't know why. Don't get me wrong. It's the weirdest thing. I don't have enough hair to have a jerry curl. But for some reason, that song does it for me. Um, all right. So, <laughs> Kirby, this question is for you. And then, Alex, you're going to be next. 
what is something that you wish you enjoyed? I wish I had more time with my family. That's that's not the truth. More time. I wish I would enjoy more time with my family. Oh, what I oh mean okay. By Woo, is, boy, yeah. you about to be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What I mean by that is I, I'm pulled in a lot of different directions. Mm-hmm. Um, so like this interview here, right after this interview, I have to leave and go to another meeting. And uh, I had meetings all day and stuff like that. So that takes away from time for my family. So yeah. just spending more time with my family. Okay. Love That's, it. Yeah. Love it. Alex, what about you? Something that I wish that I enjoyed, man, that that's a hard question. Jeez. I would, I would, I mean, Kirby's has a great point. He's a lot more busy than I am and I'm sure I'll get there. Um, some point soon, but geez, I don't even know if I have an answer. I, I, I really don't know. It's cool. It's cool. Say, don't worry. Cause I, I have to say, I have to say, I, I really, I'll, I'll say this. Okay. Um, I don't think there's much that I put myself in that I don't enjoy. Um, I kind of look at life like a blessing and every second that I can get, I try to remember it the best I can. Um, because to me, time is the most valuable asset. So I would say I enjoy life. I I really do. So every, I mean, I enjoy pretty much everything. I don't think there's anything that's in my life that because I'll say this, if there's something in my life mm-hmm. and it could be even people that I love, if it's in my life and it's negative and I don't like it, I cut it out immediately. I just I don't want to tolerate Ooh, it. That's a that's a low key bar, Alex. Well done. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if it's, if it's no good for you, cut it out. Nobody needs it. Get it out of there. Yeah. I am. I am nowhere near as noble as you. So for me, the thing that I wish I enjoyed more uh, and given the holidays is kind of thematic. I wish I enjoyed those Hallmark movies my my mother and my sisters like watching. I bro, I don't know what it is. I know y'all know y'all know what I'm talking about too. That's what you're yeah, laughing. Yeah, you know exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. As soon as the movies start, I already know the ending. So now I gotta spend an hour and a half watching some stuff I already know the ending to. I dude, Jesus yeah. Christ, I hate that. I hate those. All right, um, <laughs> this time I'm gonna go first. This time, um, and the question oh. is. What excuse would you use to get out of jury duty? I, <laughs> I, ah, this is a, t- <laughs> this is a tough one. Um, this is a bit incriminating. Um, what would I, what would I use to get out of jury duty? I would say, um, that my wife is pregnant, knowing full well that she's most likely not. <laughs> I'm definitely using that, and I will forge documents. Uh, this is not this is not on record for those of you watching. This isn't on record. I'll forge documents. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, if if this is the case, I you know if I really had to get out, that's what I'd do. But that's not the case, and I really wouldn't do. It. I'm lying. All right, <laughs> Kirby, don't arrest me. Good, Kirby. <laughs> Kirby, it's, it's on you. It's on you. Your turn to answer this question. What oh, excuse man. would you use to get out of jury duty? Uh. I probably, I probably would uh, go fly to a rental property and then say I can't afford to come back. <laughs> oh, that's a great answer. <laughs> that's a, that's a really good answer. <laughs> All right, Alex. <laughs> Alex, what about you? Okay. Um, man, I have to say, every time I get the jury duty, like summoning. Uh, the jury duty summoning, I, I get so uh, like annoyed because I'm not used to waking up that early. But when I get there, then I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. But I will say this though, my so in our family, mm-hmm. uh, I'm, I'm my I have a in my family we're half Puerto Rican, then like my father is American. Okay. On my Puerto Rican side, uh, we have an uncle who uh, did some drug trafficking in his life, so. Another uncle be like, just tell him your uncle was a drug trafficker. <laughs> like, I, don't like, I don't think I want to tell the jury. That. <laughs> oh man, but I, I'll say that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a. I might have to steal that idea. That's a good idea. That is. Oh man, that's a good one. All right, cool. All right. So this time, uh, I think we're gonna go back to Kirby. This time, Kirby, you're starting this one off. I, sorry, you, in this case, it says I, but you discovered blank before it was cool. What'd you discover before it was cool? 
uh, binge watching shows. Really? Cool. Okay. All right. All right. I was gonna give you cross colors on the episode. You talk about cross colors. I was gonna say cross oh. colors. <laughs> Alex, yeah, well, no, I mean because you know we was in the military and then uh, deployed. That's all. We only could binge watch shows. We didn't have no TV or nothing. That's like that. absolutely. And now I'm looking at all these other shows out there. Man, so I've got four. Hard, I got four hard drives right next to me right yeah. now, <laughs> full of yeah. movies. <laughs> We what discovered was the question before again? Netflix and all those other guys. <laughs> uh, the question is, Alex, <laughs> you discovered what before it was cool? Discovered what before? Probably man. nothing. <laughs> I don't think, man. My, oh, man, geez. I'm, I'm a hermit. Oh, my gosh. I discovered. I don't think I discovered anything. Man. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. I, discovered, uh, I, I would say uh, maybe, maybe uh, I discovered investing, like, in, in, as far as being in my family, now everyone else wants to like do their little their little twist to investing. But okay, yeah, I like it. I like it. That's a good answer. Very good. They're very distinguished. Mine's is more degenerate. Yeah. I discovered push pops before it was cool. <laughs> uh, and oh, okay. So Alex knows good. Alex knows push pops is push pops, <laughs> man. Push pops was the wave. It was one of the greatest things on God's green earth when I was younger. I swear to goodness. They have some. I just got back from deployment in Kosovo. They had some in the little deployment PX we had. Bro, I mm-hmm. bought them out that day. Nobody had push pops with me. I was the only person, I was the only dude up post with push pops. And I was rocking them. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Alex, this is one's on you. Okay. What's one sentence that describes your year? I would say wow. Uh weird i would say weird Mm, Uh, it's a very weird year my so i lost my godmother and my grandmother this year but at the same time got my first rental property and got to travel a little bit more with my wife so i like it good very good things and some some bad things in the same year good stuff kirby what about you what's one sentence what's the sentence that describes your year um my year i believe i underachieved i believe i underachieved and what I mean by underachieved, I had goals. I passed those goals, but I still believe that I could have hit bigger goals that I set for myself at the beginning of the year. Mm, okay. Okay. For me, uh, it was enlightening. I spent my entire time, for the most part this year, um, in Kosovo, of all places. Great place. Not bad. It was just a lot of things were happening. Family members were, I saw family members pass away. I had a friend who passed away. It's very when family around people around you and friends around you start passing away, you start to really realize what's really valuable in life. So I I'd say enlightening for myself. Okay. So this one, I'll start off. Oh man, Jesus. This is the one that I was trying not to ask myself. All right. What is the most embarrassing way I've injured myself? All right. So it's a training event, right? I'm gonna set the stage a little bit. So it's a training event. We, We have to go to the range that morning. We get up, Hands are freezing, frosty. You know, I run and take a shower. I get myself ready. I forget to put lotion on, grease hair, the whole nine. I give you that because it's important to the story. So we get out to the range and we're firing. Pow, pow, pow. And I go to pull back um, the chamber and I I pull it. uh, Trying to make this simple for those who aren't military. Basically on the M16, you've got a little latch on the back where you pull and the bullet will pop out. So I pulled it and I let it go. What I did not do is realize that my left hand was too close to the chamber. So my hand, this particular part right here, got caught in the chamber. Now, I was so ashy that that part of the finger hand came right off. (laughs) It came right (laughs) off. So so I'm sitting I'm sitting in the in the cold on the floor and I'm laying down as I'm doing this. I'm looking at my hand and it's just raw meat i'm like all right well you know i guess we're here now this is this just happened i have never been that ashy in my life and i will never be that ashy ever again i promise you all right (laughs) kirby what about you what's the most embarrassing way you've injured yourself oh actually it just happened about six months ago Uh, um me and my son my son was uh climbing trees in st pete Mm -hmm. and uh and then he was like he was like, jump off. And my wife was like, you too old. Don't jump off. Don't jump off. <laughs> so, so, you know, we, I, I got, I got, I, uh, so I, 
I had to I had to show them I wasn't old, but like as soon as I jumped off and I landed, my ears started ringing, my hip felt like it fell out of socket. Oh man, it was bad. <laughs> oh my God. It, was, it was bad. Yeah, but I oh, tried to play man. it off. You know, I had to play it off. Yeah, so I yeah. Had to play it off and walk it off. Oh, it, I was broke. Uh, <laughs> You just move it a little bit slower. Yeah, you got to get off that tree. Just move a little bit slower. You're a little bit yeah. stiffer. Don't let nobody know you got hurt. <laughs> Alex, what about you, man? What's the most embarrassing way you've injured yourself? All right. So when I was 12, I okay. was playing. And at my grandfather's house, there he used to have a hammock outside. And my aunt like pretty much dared me to try and jump over it. So I was like, okay, yeah, sounds like a good idea. I totally just tripped over it and snapped my wrist it was like i don't know, hold on, where's it? yeah it was it was totally just like my bones were going the other way it made a y and everything and i was like oh my gosh <laughs> like just totally just destroyed my whole hand <laughs> good god and then the, the even the worst thing is they were like if you can move it it's not broken and it was just crunching the whole time <laughs> oh, no. wait it's making the sounds as you're moving it is that what's happening jesus christ <laughs> I was like, I don't think it's supposed to sound like that. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, fantastic. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Alex and Kirby. Please, please, please go check out their podcast. Gentlemen, what's the best way, and I guess, Kirby, what's the best way for people to reach out to you or Alex, or is it one on both? What's the best way for people to reach out to you both? Uh, it's it's the same way for both of us. You can just pass the money at gmail.com. And I'll ask, submit your questions. We'll answer all of them or submit the comments in the comment section on any video you have a question about. We are readily looking at the videos and looking at the emails to reply back to re responders. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys have enjoyed Alex and Kirby today. You've learned quite a bit about us. Uh, Alex's crunchy hand, Kirby's busted <laughs> hip, and my extreme dislike of all Hallmark movies. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys, boy, thank you boys for coming up on so much, and uh, I guess we will see you guys next time. Remember, you're better than you were, but you're not half as good as you're going to be. We'll see you soon. Thank you.